Hello. Hi. Enter. Oh, you're not running away with the ninjas. Uh, no, no, no. Well, this is my ninja hideout. You know these guys, right? Mm -hmm. these, are these are your ninjas? The ninjas that we are hiding out. I'm not sure what it was about DOA that always just had me coming back. I think I loved the familiarity of it that I spent so many years practicing. I pretty much taught myself from scratch how to play this game. Before I even knew what frame data was, I would go into sparring mode, pick certain characters and be like, oh, okay, so this beats that out and I can do this and I can crouch under this and interrupt. So that's how I learned my own little bootleg version of frame data until I was actually able to get introduced and like, oh, okay, this is how you really do it. So um, with DOA, I just feel that just that's my game, you know, I just always am drawn to it. I have these fond memories and it was my first serious competitive game and I of course I love trying all these other games but I think just the fondness for it and the excitement I still feel to this day when I compete is just that's what always just has me coming back. Vanessa was good before like you know she even got down with us and I remember do you guys remember your first match against Vanessa? Yeah, yeah. I was like man. Who I was that? very upset let me tell you why because I was like who is this dude running that right? around that's with a girl named Vanessa? Because she would play with the all black Ryu with the devil outfit. Mm -hmm. So she looked evil. <laughs> and she didn't have a mic. So it's a little too suspicious. Very suspicious. You're godlike in this game. And running and with Vanessa. And then the game would tell you they didn't have a mic. So it's exactly. just TV right there. And you never hear a peep out of them. I'm just like, nah, nah, nah. And Vanessa made me really up. Vanessa made me upset <laughs> for a long time. Before I finally uh, figured out it was actually a girl. Even after I heard it, I'm like, all right, whoever's really playing, put them on. Because <laughs> this is not a real girl. Because back then, when you were first getting introduced to the online thing, it's not as prevalent as it is now with females in the gaming. Um, and it was it was an ego, like, stab. <laughs> Dead or Alive Ultimate stormed onto the scene as one of the first online fighting games and would forever change how we play. With online lobbies and a robust set of features, many players still view DOA 2 Ultimate as one of the best and most beloved entries in the series. As the DOA scene begins to thrive on the eve of the Battle Royale Finals, we take a look back at where the competitive spirit began. One night on Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate, uh, gentleman going by the name Silent Legend at the time and we decided to put together a match um, to make it just look like what what could possibly be you know I don't think it would have been an actual competitive match but it was just like w w let's show off the, the limitations of the, of the system and we ended up spending I think a day or two like just going through the choreography of what, what, what we would do what, what, what move will go into what move and what move, how we go into that move. And uh, I still remember we were up till four in the morning doing 67, ma 67 takes of this. Um, and this, again, this is before the YouTube era, really, right? It was, it was like you were lucky to have a capture device at the time. You, you, you didn't have, you didn't have like an iPhone at the time. You didn't have like cameras and phones either. Like you, you, getting anything to capture off of a console was like expensive stuff to do. And we put that video together and <laughs> I, I still remember we even set it up so after we finished getting the choreography done for that fight, 
uh, I said, no, you know, we got we got to go through and we got let's record me, us selecting random stage because the, the luckily the game fades to black and then resumes from fading to black um, very easily because it has no loading transition bars and stuff. So uh, we were able to make it look exactly like as if we selected random by chance on the stage. And I remember a lot of players, I still see players to this day say, oh man, your Hayabusa is amazing, Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that we, we made sure that Hayabusa made Kasumi learn that day. I remember back in the DOA 2 days, um... I, th I think I had more fun playing Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate Online than I have with almost any other fighting game since, as far as online experience goes. And uh, that was mainly because you could do so much um, with the online systems in DOA 2 Ultimate. You know, a lot of things that you can't do even in modern fighting games. You know, I remember one of the really cool things was that you could change your online handle. So it wasn't like changing your, your gamer tag or anything like that. You know, like I remember when I first started playing Daily 2 Ultimate, um, being one of the first online fighting games, I was like, all right, well, I feel that I'm one of the, the best Helena players, so I'm going to change my uh, online tag to Dr. Dog, number one Helena. And then that, that kind of caught on, and, you know, there, there were people cropping up with, you know, n number one Ayn and number one Hayate and whatever. And, uh, and then it became, you know, well, I'm number two Helena or number three Helena. You know, it was, it was just, you know, it, it was just one of those, those fun things. Daily two, Daily two Ultimate Online was it had everything you needed, like everything you needed to get into a match and have fun, and your your friends could join you at any time. It just it was it, w it just felt really good. Even like, tournament, it was, <clears throat> and it was ahead of its time. It was. It was way. I'm surprised time. everybody didn't steal and copy the online mold. For like it. right then and there, it took them like forever. Like now, the stuff that you see now was already there then. King of the Hill and the old arcade mode thing. It's like okay. Yeah. The, then they had stage. tournament mode, yeah. and they had team battle, and then they had tag team, kumite, loser stage, winner stage. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, that whole design was really good. It was just perfect for it. Like, yep. It was perfect for people that wanted to get their ass. Madden was more like, alright, he was this young dude or whatever. He was more like Kobe Bryant, I want to say. You know, he was arrogant, but he could back it up. True, true, like, true, nobody true, liked, true, true. Nobody, nobody liked him. They, I mean, <laughs> they, they respected him. First, the fact that he first of all, <laughs> ex planned him. No, you know, but you know, they say nobody liked him. But you know what? You know what? That's true. Like you know, a, a lot of stuff like had changed because like, so I started realizing like, what was going on, and I was just like, you know what? But you know what? What happened was the reason I, I think the biggest reason is because I was the guy, you know that was beating people like Tom Brady. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's like, he was like, yes, this guy is the guy that talks so much trash and this guy beat him now. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, so like, I think that's where I came from. And I was like, yeah, I'm that guy. You know what I'm saying? The guy that you guys wanted to beat that guy, I'm that guy. So then after that, I was like, whatever. And I remember even in Ultimate, I was like, I don't care, I'm gonna go online and I'm gonna challenge every double S in the room <laughs> right now. And I was like, you! And it was like, and some guy would be like, what are you talking about? And I was like, I'm beating you. And they're like, what? And I would beat them and I'd leave the room and I'd beat a whole bunch of other people. I just went on a whole streak on just doing that. Was he was a double S like murderer. Sure. Yeah. And I remember you would you would hop online and DOA to Ultimate. And because of how the original Xbox system worked with uh, Xbox Live, you could just jump in and uh, make a room, and then all of your friends could join the room. So it was always a race. You know, as soon as you saw somebody log in, it was a race to kind of join their room. So you know, that, that was just those kind of things that were uh, really fun. Remember our first game? I can't remember it completely. I remember every. I'm pretty sure I won though. I remember every detail, and this is the first time he's got it wrong because. <laughs> I like bringing it up like, do you remember the one I first game man? He's like, yeah, you won. <laughs> How I went was, I was hearing a lot about this because obviously same thing as DOA Master. Like, one, the thing was he got the game late, everybody was online, and he was in the corner. I think you were in college at the time, right? Yep. And he, I don't know if it was an internet problem or whatever the situation was, but he wasn't on and everybody else was having all these parties. And I kept hearing about, oh, the prodigal son, he <laughs> <to> return. <laughs> And then when he got here, like, Brady was talking about him, DOA Tension was talking about him, but he was like a myth, you know? You could never get in a game with him. And I just hear, like, everybody. And I was online just sitting there twiddling my thumbs, and bloop, Master comes in. I'm like, is this the real Master? He's like, yep. I'm like, I've been hearing a lot about you. <laughs> He's like, I've been hearing a lot about you, too. And I'm like, whoop. <laughs> See, wasn't that DOA 2 Ultimate? Yeah. Like, yes, like, that's the thing. And then I was like, let's do it. I took him to Burizen, and I made it rain on him. Oh my god. <laughs>
tournaments were easily ran on there. We had a bunch of, you know what I loved that I missed with DOA 2 days was when the trash talking would start. Mm-hmm. It was really friendly back in the day. But a lot of it was directed toward master. So you'd have this player and this player, trash talking master, and then put your money up and they would host the matches on YouTube on the OA Central. Oh yeah, that's yeah, right. That. That's right. And they were challenging yeah. this dude every other week. He had to reclaim his title. Just like, okay, fine, I gotta fight just on it now. Okay, fine, I gotta <laughs> fight Tom Brady now. And literally, I would grab popcorn and watch those matches. Yeah. Because, like, it was the first attempt. You know, yeah. That was the first attempt. Yeah, I remember. And Sora would record those, right? I don't know who recorded. I don't remember who recorded them. Okay, it's either Sora. Or Actually, it might have been. Um, you remember Telerik? Yes, yes, it was him. It was him. It was him. Yeah. So. And it was just so man. It, it felt like it was like high school with no school and just playing video games. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was the way online. And then the clans too. Oh, oh the clans, the clans the man. Clans. Yo, clans. This was, yeah, yeah. No, clans back then meant something, bro. No, no, like, it did. This it was did. no, no joke. This was the real clash of the clans. Dude, yeah. was, it was big yeah. clan battles. You would orchestrate like. Beat it, Michael Jackson music video. There were so many clans that had to make they, There were so many clans that had to make forms for it. Yeah, yeah we yeah. had the forms for just clans, and we'd all have our private little meetings. Yep, yeah. and only the clans can go into yeah. the zone. See, that's what the freaking cyber evil will we'll be stalking on everybody. I know. <laughs> he was like, I got mod and administration powers. I'm gonna look he, would, he would DM me like, by the way, what you said, and then you were wrong about that because it was this person that did that video. I'm like, bro, you're not even gonna be in this form. Yeah. You're in our clan. Get out of here. <laughs> But it felt like, you know, you had your own, like, we can drum and football team crew mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And it's just like, yo, this is our awesome. stuff. This is where we kick it, bro. But yeah, yeah it was this clan talking trash about that clan, and then we just go at it. And it wasn't easy, just like, well, I know for his clan, it was. It was a regiment. You had to get beat in. A little yeah, bit. seriously. Yeah. I, was like, right. I love how to... I had to be a stand in for your clan. Oh, yeah, because well, well, I didn't have anybody at the beginning, so even They'd though they like, oh, they sent me an invite. Oh, oh, we're initiating, I don't know, just Fab. Can you stand in as an ultimate member and lead him down? I was like, <laughs> you guys have people. Why am I I was, we had very few people. That was very like, few hard. I got like, my invite when BOA 4 dropped, so it was kind of like, ah. <laughs> really? It, I, it was uh, tough to get in. It was. It was, it was good, man. It was good. I felt like the respect and stuff was still in place for DOA Ultimate. The respect yeah. was there, the game was there, the online was there. It was just, it was a favorable experience where you would rush home to get online and play with yeah. the guys. Mm-hmm. And at the, I think at the same time, you know, once we did the whole transition to offline and people are starting to like see it for the first time and after like, uh, you know, the tournaments that were people were getting side tournaments, you know, like beat time and when DID came around, it was just kind of like everybody was, in the same mindset. Mm-hmm. Like everybody was like, oh my goodness, like we're, we're all meeting up for the first time. I don't know that person, I don't know that person, but we're, we're all going off on, you know, on chance, you know, and see what's gonna happen. And it just felt good because when everybody did it, it was like, yeah, this was, this is good. It's like, we all wanted this. We all talked trash, but now this is where we want to be. It's like, this is what we want. So it's just like, there's a lot more feelings into it back then. With the release of the Xbox 360 and Dead or Alive 4 came the first next generation fighting game. The graphic finesse and explosive stages caught the attention of major esports organizations, as DOA once again was at the forefront of evolution for the competitive fighting game scene. Also, it was where it was at for me personally. Like, 4 came really quick. I think, did you guys agree that 4 came quick? Yeah. Well, yeah, because uh, DOA 2 was kind of like a refresher, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. DOA 3, you know, was already out, and then 2 came out, and that's why. So, uh, 4 it came out, what, 2006? 2005, late 2005. Mm-hmm. Late, 2005. late 2005. It was supposed to be a launch title, and I think Microsoft. Yeah, uh, I remember yeah, yeah, yeah. when yeah. I played Manny online in 4, and oh, I actually won. I, oh, I was oh, winning. He oh, was so God. angry. He's like, we don't talk about this. <laughs> Yo, he was <laughs> so angry. He's like, how are you winning? Like, you know, I was so salty yeah. on how bad they changed how it was. I was so That's salty. Okay, so the changes. That's Dude. what needs to be addressed here. Is like Dude. The changes. I had so many people telling me, you don't have four punch kick anymore. I was like, you Oh, I remember 
interesting forms, the threads, just like, ah, master is finished! <laughs> oh my god. P-plus A is gone! Yes. 4.0 4, uh, 4 Hyatt was like a beast in that game. He was beating like, me down with Hyatt, I was getting so no, pissed. And the, the crazy thing was, is like, that's never happened. Like, <laughs> Hayabusa would be always, you know, a step ahead of Hyatt mm -hmm. all the time, all the time. And then he's like, you know what? I am not playing this game anymore until I start winning. I'm gonna oh yeah, he went in the hiatus. He, 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 he was gone. He, half, he, two weeks. Yeah, he was on hiatus. I was, I was, I was like, you know, when you're in class and the teacher leaves the room and everybody else felt crazy. That's how I felt when Manny took those two weeks off. Yeah. And I'm doing more. I was so salty. I was like, what? I was literally once I left that, I was just thinking, what did they do to this character? <laughs> What did they do to him? I was like, I don't understand. I was like, I get it, I have an exuber drop, but why did you take everything else? Why did you take it all? But, so, the, man. but the funny thing was, like, when he was gone and then he got back, he was strong with Hayabusa, but then once he got strong with him, that's when they made the changes. 4.1 came out. Oh, yeah. And it changed. I had to, he was watered down and Hayabusa <laughs> was just up there. And then I was just like, man, like, I can't win. I can't <laughs> win against this guy now. Back in DOA 4, it was always tough. Mamba, perfect legend, offbeat, master. And then here I come, coming into that pool, and I was kind of beating offbeat. So I was kind of, we and him were kind of contending for that fourth spot, and then he was winning. And then, you know, it kind of fluctuated a lot. And then it was, I, was, I kind of had the target on my head, because I, I was at that bottom part. So everybody wanted to beat me to try to get into that top four spot. The World Cyber Games and Championship Gaming Series were ahead of their time, and DOA was the first fighting game to be featured in either esports league. This also helped pave the way for what would have been a new peak in fighting games with the IGN Pro League. It was the beginning of a new era for the fighting game community. You know, when it came to the Championship Gaming Series, um, I remember originally there was this big uproar because you know nobody really knew what it was. They were holding this draft in Los Angeles. You know, we, we'd all seen the Championship Gaming Invitational, the first one and the second one. Um, we'd seen the, uh, the production value and everything. We knew it was something big. Um, so, I mean, I don't know, tons of players came out for the, uh, the first Combine. And it was like, you, you felt like you were auditioning for like some sort of a, a Olympic trials or something. It was, you know, you, you knew it was going to be international. You knew there were a ton of people that were going to be there. You knew all the top players. We're, we're going to be involved. When I first started competing in the championship gaming series, I felt a lot of pressure because I was the number one draft pick and there was a lot of expectations set on me, being that a lot of the GMs pretty much put me as this unstoppable force that would never lose any points where in any fighting games, really, there is always a chance that it's pretty much for me, it's like a game of chess. You take some turns and then you have to outwit your opponent. Of course, there's more technicalities to it as any one who plays fighting games is. So with me and the girls, especially Kat, she was trained by a lot of, of the top players and they, she was able to implement a lot of the strategies that were taught. So I was um, feeling you know, the pressure that I had to hire my training and also be prepared for anything that her and the other girls would bring to the table. CGS was equivalent to what, well, well I won't say equivalent, but it was up there with how League of Legends is now. Like it was televised, you know, you had teams, everybody was kind of having to pull their own weight on the team. Like, it was tough, it was a lot of pressure out there to perform well, even in a game like DOA 4 where it could get random really quick. That was probably one, that was definitely one of the glory, glory moments for DOA 4, for DOA in general. I don't think we're ever going to get that again for DOA unless they make some changes to the game overall. But that was definitely one of the high points of DOA and high points for, for gaming to get to that level. I think it was difficult too because we were pioneering essentially what esports was. There was no coined theme, theme of it being called esports. 
it was at the time a random idea produced by a bunch of television series on direct TV as well, so it didn't really quite have the audience as you would find now on YouTube and Twitch, and YouTube and Twitch weren't even around. Like, Twitch, YouTube was just starting, and even gaming for YouTube wasn't a huge deal. It was all about makeup tutorials and whatnot. So just gaming in general was evolving and transforming, and pioneering that and, and being females, as well as being put into the category of like female league, definitely kind of can backlash the respect you get as a female player. Um, but Vanessa held her, whether it was DOA 2 days or DOA 4 when we were playing a championship gaming series, it was definitely a point to, to be inspired because she was able to represent the fact that girls don't have that stigma of sucking or you know, not being able to know what a combo is or frame data or information that's you know, involved in fighting games. So it was, for us, we didn't even realize what we were doing. We're all like 19, 20 at the time. We're all very young. Um, Esports wasn't really, you know, it was a vague idea that Fatality had kind of done a little bit with PC gaming. But once it started becoming more of a console thing and including Counter-Strike, um, it was definitely weird to kind of be a part of that whole thing, uh, let alone representing the girls or just seeing what the backlash was like. I remember writing for the championship gaming series and being at every single game, both the, the, the US League and then the World Finals, you know, there was something different about CGS compared to, you know, what you have with esports now. And I'm not talking about money. I mean, you know, you had a uh, million dollars on the line, but you know, that's, that, that's a lot, but you know, you compare it to something like Dota 2 and it's, it's nothing for, for these days. But, um, you know, a lot of fighting game tournaments, every fighting game tournament really, like, you're, you're in control of your own destiny, you know. Um, it's, it's, other than, you know, the, the handful of team tournaments, you know, it's, it's on you. If you win a match, it's on you. If you lose a match, it's on you. You know, whereas at Championship Gaming Series, you were part of a team. You know, there were, there were two Dead or Alive players, and then you had, you know, your Project Gotham Racing players, you had your Counter-Strike team, all that kind of stuff. And you could get a perfect score against your opponent. You could go 5-0, you know, win, win five matches to their no matches. Um, and it wouldn't matter, you know, your, your team could still lose. And I thought that was a really interesting facet of the championship gaming series, you know, how you could, you could play to your best. You could literally get a perfect score against your opponent and your team would still lose. And so you, you kind of developed this, really, this closeness with your team where you, you were striving to make sure everyone was better. You'd do everything you could make sure that you were not only at the top of your game, but that you know the, the other DOA player on your team was, was at the top of their game, that your Counter-Strike players were, were you know, hyped up and ready to play their match. You know, everybody, it was, a, it was a team sport, it was a team game. And you know, it felt like the Olympics where you know, Team USA, they, they all bond together and they all wanna make sure that they do well. You're not just performing for yourself, you're performing for your country or, or in, in this case for your team. And uh, that's something that you don't really see in fighting games these days. And the first draft pick was a huge deal because not only was it just for Dead or Alive, it was for every game accumulated right. at CGS. It was for Counter-Strike, it was for the racing games, it was for the sports games. So her being the number one draft pick, that meant a huge amount of pressure because it, she was representing what was the most important thing to, to pick up. Like when you get the first draft pick, you pick the best player out there that's gonna get all the points, that's gonna get all the touchdowns, whatever you wanna call it. And her being that, I could totally see the pressure on it. So yeah, my main mission, obviously, as her uh, rival was to just try and break that. And she was an unstoppable force. She was 5 0 everyone. And it was just devastating because everyone was just looking to crack the glass that was just solid. So um, I think eventually I was actually able to because she mirror matched me as Hayate and that was my one chance because she gave me a break by choosing the same character as me. Um, and it was really funny because it was 4-1 and I was just like, oh my god, I actually get to pull a Vanessa. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately she just came back and she got in that groove that she always does get in and it just eventually I got my ass and it's a uh, but yeah, that's pretty much what most of the girls spend their time doing, and I'm sure that had to be stressful too, just to kind of watch everybody train against you, pretty much. Oh,
them! After a seven-year hiatus, it was time for Dead or Alive to return. This time, with a new focus on competition. DOA 5 would make several significant changes to the trademark triangle system the series was known for, generating a new age of DOA players that would take the competitive scene to new heights. When they first announced DOA 5, I was ecstatic. There was a seven-year gap. I mean, I honestly did not think it was going to happen. When I was competing, they said Adagaki left. I thought that was it. Oh my god, it's over. They're never going to make another DOA until eventually we start um, getting news from Tecmo. First, they made the DOA Dimensions, which was pretty cool. I mean, I like DOA Dimensions myself. And as exciting as DOA Dimensions was, a lot of us in the DOA community were like, well, this is cool, but come on, where's a new DOA? I mean, we're hungry for it. We've been waiting for almost a decade. And when it finally got announced, it was like, oh my god, the world is ending. DOA 5 finally comes. And it was hard at first because from DOA 3, DOA 4 was already a big transition for me. I mean, it was just so different to me, so I had to adjust. And then same to this, DOA 4 was such a stark difference to DOA 5. There's so many new things implemented, and they really switched things up. And um, it's something you just got to get used to, but I prefer DOA 5 system over DOA 4. Is um, DOA 4, while I had fun with it, was really not my game of preference, but DOA 5 is something that I really enjoy playing. DOA 2 is still far and my favorite game of all the DOAs, and um, I just really had an exciting experience trying to relearn and trying to, you know, get good with my characters, because sometimes it's a struggle, especially I didn't have a, such a disadvantage, like, a master, he his whole character completely changed, major overhaul. Katomi kind of stayed pretty much the same, but there's still newer things that I have to learn with her. I will never forget, like when I heard the news, I remember waking up to a phone full of just texts, and it was just DOA 5, DOA 5, all caps, exclamations. And at that point, when it was all these people saying it, I knew it wasn't a joke. So like my heart jumped into my throat, and when I saw the footage, it almost felt like my dad had come back from war, you know? It's like, oh my god, yes, daddy's home, you know? Uh, but then instantly it was like, what is it going to play like? That was my immediate next fear. Uh, but from the look of it, it looked like these guys nailed it, you know? It was, and to me, it's all about the feeling, because <clears throat> when 2 came out, I felt, me personally, that was the game. Like, that emotional connection that I had with a video game, I probably could not have had a stronger one with a virtual experience. Four, I didn't feel as much that connection, so I was just wondering when it came to five, how when I played it, if that strong bond would return, how my character would play, because for anybody like me that only plays one character in the game, or mains a character, that's how you connect to that whole universe, is through, that, that Kasumi for me is the conduit into that universe. So my next fear was, how is Kasumi going to play? Are they going to change her up? Are they going to bring her back? Uh, but I love the news, man. Like, it felt like Christmas. You know, DOA has such a negative stigma in the competitive fighting game scene. And it's interesting because DOA was at the forefront of uh, a lot of the, the esports connection with the fighting game community. You know, we had uh, the World Cyber Games, which was kind of, it wasn't the first major esports organization, but it was early on. And DOA was one of the first fighting games involved in the World Cyber Games. DOA 2 Ultimate and DOA 4 were both in the World Cyber Games way back in 2005, 2006. Um, and the Championship Gaming Series, the only fighting game in CGS was Dead or Alive 4. And then you, you move on and you had uh, the IGN Pro League, which was planning on using both Dead or Alive 5 um, and Street Fighter 4. And in each one of these steps, you had DOA right at the, the forefront, you know, right there kind of uh, introducing esports to the fighting game scene. And whatever you want to say about it, you know, you, you can't ever take that away from DOA. So I think it's really interesting that a lot of people have such a negative outlook of the game when it's kind of done so much for the fighting game community. Well, DOA, I'm going to get real and start actually discussing some of myself with you guys in this interview. Um, before DOA, I was very timid. I was very shy. I had very low self-confidence and I would play a lot of video games and I would never really expect it to go 
anywhere besides just for my own enjoyment. And um, when DOA started um, getting serious and there was multiple tournaments for it, and um, I was still kind of scared because I've always had that um, issue within myself that I, like I touched previously, I've always been very critical and hard on myself. So even though everybody else would encourage me, say, oh, you're really good, you should do it. I'd be like, no, 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 I can't. And eventually I just went for it. And I'm so glad that I did because I feel that it has made me a stronger, more self-assured person than I was before. Before I was very naive, I had no real life experience. And DOA has helped me evolve into the person I am today where I'm more confident in the things I do and certain areas of my life, I feel that DOA has helped me just really discover, if, you know, it might sound corny to you guys, but it's helped me discover who I really was beside, underneath all that bad energy I had when I first came onto the scene, all that negativity, low self-confidence, low self-esteem, and it helped me realize my potential that I could reach just by playing this simple game, the people I've met, the experiences I've had, I really wouldn't trade them for anything that I, anything in the world really.